Did you know that we owe credit for one of the most advanced eight-speed automatic transmission designs to two Frenchmen? Find out more here in this episode on the Weber Auto YouTube channel. My name is John Kelly, and in this episode we are going to be covering the Ison 8-speed rear-wheel drive automatic transmission. This is one of only about three rear-wheel drive 8-speed automatic transmissions that are in production and use at the time. Um, the other two transmissions that are in use are the General Motors 8L90 and the ZF or ZF 8-speed uh, automatic transmission. Um, I forget the model number. Uh, maybe one of you knows what that is and can put it in the comments. But there are only three. And the General Motors transmission and the ZF transmission use four planetary gear sets to achieve the eight speeds, which is pretty typical of two forward gears per planetary gear set. But the Ison automatic transmission is a totally unique design. It totally blew my mind, and I'm real excited to show it to you uh, here today. Um, regarding the Frenchman, there uh, are some designs of planetary gear sets that are used in this uh, Ison 8-speed uh, automatic. By the way, this Ison 8-speed automatic is, is used in uh, 2008 and above Lexus rear-wheel rear drive vehicles, and it's also used in the Cadillac CTS-V, their high-performance uh, Cadillac CTS uh, with the 8-speed uh, automatic transmission. So let's to understand uh, this unique design for this 8-speed transmission, we need to go back in history. And there were uh, four patents that were filed for different designs of planetary gear sets. And I want to walk you through all four of those, which leads to this 8-speed uh, transmissions. The transmission. Uh, two of those patents, which were big, major designs, were done by Frenchmen and a long time ago. Uh, one of the patents is 66 years old. Uh, another one is 26 years old. And then there's a Japanese uh, guy that works for Ison Corporation that in 1999, so 16 years ago, patented uh, another variation of this design. And then um, we'll start with the most basic uh, design on the planetary gear set and build up from there. So, the first planetary gear set to understand so that you can understand this 8-speed automatic transmission is the Simpson uh, gear set. Uh, the Simpson gear set was developed by a Mr. Howard Simpson. Mr. Howard Simpson, according to what I uh, was able to find on the internet, uh, was a engineer for Henry Ford back in the early days of Ford Motor Company, and he died in 1963. But in 1950, he patented a compact design of planetary gear set that we now call the Simpson gear set. And I've got a Simpson gear set uh, right here in front of me here. And the Simpson gear set involves a set of planetary internal gears, ring gears, annulus gears, whatever terminology you want to use to describe those. So two ring gears. It also consists of two planet carriers. And I have a separate YouTube video on just planetary gear set operation and how all that works. But the Simpson gear set, we've got two ring gears, two planet carriers, and then we have one common sun gear. Now, this, this sun gear, as you can see, has a, uh, a common shaft. It's all one solid piece. It turns one speed. Uh, they're connected together. This sun gear is a little bit larger diameter than this one, which gives us a different uh, planetary gear ratio. So I want to put this uh, Simpson gear set together. The Simpson gear set was a three speed, uh, and it was done with um, this configuration. And so some of the early three speeds uh, used by Ford and General Motors and Chrysler and so on 
used the Simpson gear set as a, as a three-speed transmission. And so we've got I guess we better get the sun gear in there. The ring gear, planet carrier, and the bottom sun gear. And then we have the top sun gear all on the same shaft with the upper planetary carrier and then the upper ring gear. Just like that. Okay. Now, this is a three speed. And I just want to quick, quickly show you the, th the three speeds. So I'm going to make three little marks here. I'll make a paint mark right there, another one right here, and another one right here. And so on the three speed uh, gear set, let me zoom in here just a little bit. We have devices that will hold one or the other planetary carrier to give us the different gear ratios. So for first gear, we're going to hold this bottom carrier and turn the top ring gear. And it's about a two and a half to one gear ratio. So I'm going to turn this upper ring gear about two and a half times to get one full turn of the output shaft. So here we go. There's one, two, and a half. Two and a half times up here to get one turn down here. All right, let me go back, line up our marks again. Here we go, they're all lined up. Second speed is about one and a half to one. So now we're going to hold the upper um, sun gear from moving and turn the upper ring gear. So here we go, one and a half. So here's one and a half. And so we've got two speeds out of the three speeds. Third speed is just simply direct drive. Uh, we drive the ring gear and the carrier the same speed. So let me line those marks up again. Here we are. Upper ring gear, upper carrier, here we go. Just one turn in equals one turn out. So just real quick and simple, a Simpson gear set patented in 1950. This gear set was used in automatic transmissions for many, many years and as a three-speed. But then uh, in the late 70s and up through uh, all of the time that we had four speeds, all they did to make a four speed out of this was to take the Simpson gear set and throw an overdrive planetary gear unit in front of it. So in the, the back half of the transmission would be the three speed and it would have an overdrive unit, a two speed overdrive unit in the front. So it would give us four speeds. Uh, direct drive for first, second, and third, and then it would be overdrive um, overdrive fourth gear would be from the additional gear set. Chrysler's put the three speed in the front and their overdrive in the back. There's, there's different variations of it, but the Simpson gear set been around a long time. Uh, that is a real basic uh, automatic transmission design, but it was universal uh, at the time because prior to that we had to have an individual gear set, planetary gear set for each uh, set of speeds and so a two-speed automatic transmission the power glides and so on they only had one planetary gear set which gave them one underdrive gear and one direct drive um, but in <laughs> in 1949 uh, there was a French man named Paul Ravenneau Paul Ravenneau and he, in, he invented what's called, or what we refer to as the Ravenel gear set. And the Ravenel gear set is a four speed. So the Simpson was a three, started at three speeds. Ravenel in 1949, that was one year before Simpson and his three speed, um, invented this four speed planetary gear set. And from what I've read on the internet, and I, and I could be wrong because it's, it's the internet, um, it wasn't utilized because we didn't have precise enough hydraulic controls for timing 
of applying and releasing uh, clutches and bands and so on to have a smooth four speeds as far as upshifting and downshifting. So it just kind of sat around until uh, 1999 when um, we started developing uh, six-speed automatic transmissions. So the Rav Ravik, if I can say it right, Ravino uh, gear set is a four-speed uh, gear set. But it, to my knowledge, it wasn't used in any four-speed automatic transmissions. I could be wrong, probably am, but uh, I'm not aware uh, of any right off the top of my head. Um, it was used when uh, it was we turned uh, uh, transaxles transmissions into six-speed uh, automatic transmissions. And so I want to show you the Ravino gear set first. And so the Ravino gear set starts with, and, and this is the back half, by the way, of this eight-speed automatic transmission. So we're using a four-speed Ravino gear set in the back of an eight-speed automatic. This is the output shaft of the rear-wheel rear -wheel drive um, Ison automatic transmission. This particular model in the Lexus is called the AA80, that's an 80E. The E means it's two wheel drive. Uh, if it was a H, it would be all wheel drive. Uh, F would be four wheel drive, and so on. So we have our uh, drive shaft flange, uses the flexible coupling rather than U joints. And if this output shaft turns, of course, the, the vehicle will move. So let's, uh, let's get this set up in the holding fixture I have here. So I'm going to set this right here. I've got a label on here labeling it as the output shaft. And it is free to turn. I'm just going to stick the, the output flange on the back here and put the nut on there just so it's easier to see when the um, when the shaft is turning now connected to this output shaft in a Rab Rabino gear set is a ring gear so we've got a just a simple ring gear here that connects to the output shaft. So if this ring gear moves at all, the vehicle moves. So this, this is referred to in this eight-speed transmission as the rear planetary gear set. And down inside of that, let me take this back off, we are going to have what is known as the intermediate shaft come down. So we have three, sh three shafts on this transmission, an input shaft, the intermediate shaft, and the output shaft. So as the name implies, intermediate is in between. Uh, the intermediate shaft has a set of clutch plates right here called the C2 clutch, and it will be used in the uh, Ravidno gear set here in just a moment. So we've got a ring gear, we've got a shaft, the intermediate shaft, and then the unique part that makes it different from the uh, Simpson gear set is this planetary gear carrier. So this carrier, uh, well, remember, a, a Simpson gear set had a common sun gear, two carriers, and two ring gears. The Ravino gear set has one ring gear, one carrier, but then it has two individual sun gears. Two sun gears. Okay, so inside of this planet carrier, it has, as you can see on the outside, it has the, the planet gears. This planet gear is a really long gear. It sticks all the way up in about right there. So that's called the long planet. And then it meshes just off to the side here. It's kind of hard to see. I'll try to show down the middle here also. The lighting isn't very good. But it meshes with a short planetary gear set. So we've got the tall planetary or the tall planet gear here, the short planet gear here. 
the tall planet gear meshes with the front sun gear and the short planet gear meshes with the rear sun gear that fits down in here. So a Rav Ravino gear set has one ring gear, one planet carrier with long and short pinions and all by itself there's no power uh, being transferred through. But we're going to take our rear sun gear as it's called in this um, gear set and we'll put it all the way down in and let it mesh. And that rear sun gear by the way has a clutch hub for what is called the C1 clutch that splines to it. So we can turn the, that rear sun gear independently of the front sun gear. The front sun gear right here is connected to this uh, s clutch housing and it will spline to uh, another clutch housing that has a C3 clutch in it. But it allows us to independently turn the upper sun gear. So between these two housings, we can turn the two sun gears, the upper or the lower sun gear with this piece inside, the upper sun gear with this piece uh, on the outside. All right. Now, we, we're <laughs> let's not forget, we're talking about an eight speed automatic here. So far, we are looking at a Ra Ravino gear set that can give us four speeds. And so let's look at what the four speeds are. And let's, uh, let's make, let's make some marks here. So I'm going to make a mark on this, uh, this ring gear right here and on this holding fixture uh, down below it. The ring gear turns the same speed as the output shaft down below it. Um, I'm going to make a mark on the planet carrier right here. And on this shell that turns the front sun gear. And then on this other shell that turns the rear sun gear. Okay, so for first gear in a four-speed Ravino gear set, um, we are we have a gear ratio of almost two and a half to one. So very much like that Simpson gear set, almost two and a half to one, and we will hold the carrier from turning, and we'll do that with uh, the B2 brake that would uh, come in here and hold that, and then we will turn the rear sun gear. So that's this inner uh, set of splines. And so if I, let's get our marks lined up here again. So looking down here, I'm going to turn this inner piece two and a half times to get this ring gear to turn one time. And that's our first gear. So here we go. So here's one. two and a half. So there's our first gear, two and a half uh, to one. Okay, now let's, let's bring it back. Second gear, we're still going to turn the rear sun gear, but now we're going to hold the center sun, or the center sun gear, the front sun gear from turning. So now I'm going to hold this, sun, this shell that connects to that front sun gear from turning, and I'm just going to turn the rear sun gear. This should take one and a half turns to turn the ring gear in the output shaft one turn. So one and a half turns of the rear sun gear to get one, one turn of the output shaft. So here we go. There's one and a half. So one and a half turns. So that, that is second gear on a Rav Ravino um, four-speed gear set. 
Now third gear is, is pretty easy. We're going to drive the front sun gear, which is this housing here connects to it, and the rear sun gear, so that's this inner housing, we're going to drive those the same, the same speed. So that's pretty much locking those two together. We have direct drive one to one. So there's our third gear on the Raveno gear set. And our fourth gear, which we get an overdrive, which is the big bonus over the uh, Simpson gear set, the Raveno gear set gives us an overdrive. And so this, a usable overdrive. Uh, to get overdrive on this gear set, we will hold the front sun gear from turning and we will turn the carrier. So let me, uh, let me get the marks lined back up here. Where's the mark? Oh, I must have rubbed it off. All right. I'm going to just make a mark right here under the B2 brake sign. And we'll just use the B2 brake sign also. So I'm going to hold the front sun gear, which is this housing, turn the planet carrier, which is this piece that has the B2 brake that can apply it. And now the ring gear and the output shaft should turn faster than the carrier that we're turning. And we should get a 0 0.685 to one gear ratio. So in other words, we will only turn this planet carrier almost seven tenths of a turn to get one full turn of the output shaft here. So here we go. Notice the ring gear is turning faster than the planet carrier. We have one full turn coming up right there. We have one full turn of the ring gear. But notice if I spin the whole assembly around, we only had 0.685 turns of the planet carrier. So this is a Raveno gear set. We've got four forward gears. And of course, uh, we have reverse. Uh, in reverse, if we hold the carrier from turning and turn the front sun gear, we'll have a reverse gear ratio of about a little over two to one. So notice now, the, even though we turn the front sun gear forward, the rear ring gear, or of course the ring gear turns backwards, a little over two turns, 2.176 turns to one to give us reverse. So the rear half, uh, or actually it's about the rear two thirds of this eight speed ISIN automatic transmission is a four speed Raveno gear set. All right, now here is where uh, things get uh, interesting. How do we get eight speeds now? Um, there was a, a French gentleman that came along and in 1989, patented a six-speed planetary design, a six-speed transmission design. And that six-speed design uh, is called the Le Peltier uh, transmission uh, design. And the guy's name is Pierre Le Peltier, uh, a French engineer. And like I say, in 1989, he took the Raveno gear set, so he built upon what uh, Paul Raveno uh, developed, and he put a simple two-speed um, planetary gear set in series with it and created the six-speed. So if any of you are driving a six-speed front-wheel drive transaxle, chances are it's a Le Peltier uh, designed and patented uh, transaxle. So we have uh, for the front gear set on a six speed uh, automatic transmission, we have another ring gear. We have another planet carrier. And we also have another sun gear. So just one more set one more set of planetary gears. Well, what Le Peltier did is he figured out how to uh, not just 
do a two-speed uh, overdrive of a four-speed transmission. It, it's more involved than that. Um, it uh, it actually allowed for six uh, nicely spaced uh, gear sets. Uh, so that's what I'm t or gear ratios. And so what I'm saying is that's different than the old Simpson gear set that had a two-speed overdrive either in front or in back of it. This uh, uses the two-speed uh, planetary gear set to hold and drive different pieces of the Ravino gear set in, at different speeds to give us six forward speeds rather than just the four that you could get out of the uh, Ravino. And he, like I say, he patented that design in, let's see, 1989 is when he patented that design and it's been used ever since. The uh, uh, let's see, the GM 6070 is the, and, and all the variations of the 6070 is the Le Peltier design. The Ford 6F50 and all the variations of that, uh, it are the, it's the same thing. And there are, there are others, uh, both front and rear wheel drive, that use this uh, Le Peltier design. Um, well, Le Peltier uh, was still alive, obviously, in 1989. And I really don't know if he's still alive today. Uh, maybe one of you uh, viewers could uh, tell me. I could not find it on the uh, internet if he was still still alive. But I did find an article that said in 1999, 10 years after Le Peltier patented his six-speed uh, transmission, uh, three independent... Uh, engineers came up with an eight-speed design that used Le Peltier's six-speed components. So what I'm telling you is we take the six-speed automatic transaxle that Le Peltier designed, which uses a simple planetary gear set in series with a Ravino gear set to give us six speeds. They took that design, and here's the mind-blowing part, they didn't add any additional planetary gears, but they figured out a way to get two more forward gear ratios, nice to use forward gear ratios, usable gear ratios, <laughs> out of these exact same parts, just by holding and driving uh, existing pieces uh, at some different speeds. And so I'm going to show you how that is done. Uh, this actually took me two weeks. I, I disassembled this transmission in, a, in an afternoon, which is no big deal. But it took me two weeks to figure this transmission out as to how it gets all of its gear ratios. And so I want to share uh, that with you. So let's put the rest of it together uh, here on the, on the bench. So we've got our Ravino gear set. I'm just going to take a... Uh, the front ring gear and set it in and then I'm going to take the front planet carrier and set it in and oh wait a minute there's one thing I wanted to show you show you uh, on this design this front input shaft is splined directly to that intermediate shaft. Let me just show you that real quick because you need to, you need to see that, I think, to understand what is how this eight speed actually works. Okay, so here's our intermediate shaft like I showed you before. Notice our input shaft has teeth that spline directly to that out or to this intermediate shaft. So this is odd as far as any other transmission I've seen. Um, we are directly driving the intermediate shaft with the input shaft. We are directly driving the front planet carrier 
with this uh, input shaft. Now I'll show you how cool that is and why that helps us get eight gears uh, here in just a moment with some other things. So let me set our Ravino, whoops, Ravino ring gear down here. Our Ravino planet carrier. Our rear sun gear, our front sun gear. Oh, I forgot. There's one sprag in here, one way uh, clutch, that is only used during the one two shift to make the transition smooth. Um, so here's our front sun gear our, and our clutch hub to connect to the rear sun gear. Here's our front planet carrier. Planet ring gear, and then here's our front planet carrier, and it's got to go down and spline to that intermediate shaft. Oh, come on, there we go. So we had to line up a few things there to get it to drop. All right, now. A unique design on this 8-speed is the front sun gear is actually splined right to our oil pump stator support. So that, <laughs> and of course it doesn't want to line up. There we go. So the sun gear never turns. This sun gear is held solid always. So we will put the sun gear down in the planet carrier. We will put our oil pump housing down in. There we go. Didn't mean for it to drop that quickly. That's not really good on bearings. The only thing that I didn't put on that I will show you here is it has a this clutch drum that goes underneath the oil uh, pump housing and these teeth here spline to this uh, front sun gear uh, housing it splines directly to it and then there's a c4 clutch that connects to the front planet carrier there's a b4 brake that goes around the outside of this that can stop it from turning but all of this just connects to that front sun gear Okay, so our front planetary gear set is right here. It's just a simple gear set with the sun gear always being held solid. And so to hold that solid, I'm going to, <laughs> I had to get creative on this uh, video to figure out a way to hold that solid and, and turn the other pieces. And so I've got a, uh, just for demonstration purposes, I've got a vise over here. There is a hole right here in the, the clutch, the, the uh, oil pump housing. And I'm just going to lock that screwdriver in there. That will keep the oil pump housing from turning, which basically is holding that sun gear from rotating. So our front planetary gear set, the front sun gear is always held. The input shaft is connected directly to the planet carrier. And so if you think about this for a moment, the, the input shaft and the front sun gear, or the, I'm sorry, the input shaft and the front planet carrier right here are splined together and the carrier and the input shaft just turn uh, at a one-to-one -one gear ratio with the input shaft of the automatic transmission hooks to our torque converter and, and th through the through the converter to the engine um, the only gear ratio change in that front gear set is right here between
between the carrier and the ring gear. So if I turn this carrier, notice if I turn the carrier, the ring gear right below it turns a little bit slower. And it actually has a gear ratio of about 1.863 to 1. And so all we have from the front gear set to feed the back four speed uh, gear set are two gear ratios. One to one, which is directly through our input shaft and all the way through our uh, intermediate shaft to that rear uh, C2 clutch. And then we have through gear reduction, the sun gear that can be connected to that front. I'm sorry, not sun gear. We have this ring gear, <laughs> the front ring gear that through this housing right here, which drives the front sun gear, can drive the sun gear at, at slower speeds. It also has a clutch on the inside of it that can connect to that rear sun gear clutch hub. So the front planetary gear set can drive the front, re, er, front sun gear of the Raveno gear set. It can drive the rear sun gear of the Raveno gear set. It can drive them at uh, a one-to-one -one gear ratio if we lock it up, or it can drive it at a 1.83, 863 uh, to one gear ratio. So the front planetary gear set never changes gears. It never shifts. All it does is creates two, uh, cr cr what's a good way to say this? It creates rotating components that spin at two speeds. One at direct drive with the input shaft, one turn in, one turn out, one at a slower speed, 1.863 to 1 gear ratio as compared and, and slower than the input shaft. So there's never any clutches that, uh, that um, apply and release to upshift or downshift the transmission off of this front gear set. That whole front gear set, the only reason it's there is to create two rotational speeds that we can use to drive the uh, Raveno gear set in the back. Now, this design right here uh, was actually a modification of the six-speed Le Peltier design. And this was done by a guy that worked for Eisen Corporation, Eisen Transmissions in Japan, uh, in 1999. He and Mr. Le Peltier and um, one other guy, uh, all kind of came up with this idea for the eight-speed version of, or eight-speed modification of the Le Peltier design, all in that same time frame. However, the guy at Eisen was the first one to make it to the patent office, and he got the first patent. And this transmission, the Eisen eight-speed automatic transmission, is the only one that's ever been produced off of that patent design. Now, Ms. Mr. Le Peltier, he also received a patent, but it was for a, uh, a, a variation of this that has never been produced. And the other guy also received a patent, but it was a different variation that has also never been uh, produced. This is the only one. That, so once again, this took the six, it took a four-speed Raveno, <laughs> it threw in the two-speed simple gear set in front that Le Peltier patented to make a six speed and then without adding any planetary gear sets they figured out how to um, get two more gear ratios to give us an eight speed. So this eight speed transmission is lighter, has fewer parts, fewer clutches than the GM eight speed and the ZF, the ZF uh, German uh, eight speed rear wheel drive transmission which is a huge benefit as as far as fuel economy and um, emissions are concerned. Okay, well, let's take a look at all of the gear ratios then through this eight-speed transmission and how did they get those two extra speeds that the six-speed Le Peltier design did not get. So I'm going to uh, back the camera up just a little bit here, just a moment. All right, the first gear I want to show you is, is just reverse. And so uh, reverse, we have the C4 clutch, which is this uh, clutch housing 
that connects right here that's directly connected to the input shaft and it's going to connect to that front sun gear through this housing right here it'll be applied and then we also have the b2 brake uh, applied and the b2 brake is this piece right here and that'll give us a gear ratio of 2.176 we are doing nothing more than using the Ravino reverse gear ratio it's exactly the same uh, gear ratio uh, here on the Ravino and so uh, I'm going to turn the input shaft. I've installed a, a chisel holder on the input shaft here to make it easier to turn. And uh, we've got the marks right here of our output shaft, our ring gear, uh, lined up with the, the holding fixture here. And so uh, if we turn the input shaft, which would turn the C4 clutch, which would turn this housing, uh, and hold this B2 brake, which holds the planet carrier. So basically, we're holding the rear planet carrier, the Ravenel gear set. We're turning the, the front sun gear, and we just simply get reverse. And so we would have one, two, and just a little bit more, 2.176 turns of the input shaft to get one turn of the output shaft in reverse. All right, so we don't use anything in reverse except the Raveno gear set. Now let's go to uh, first gear. And in first through fifth gears, we are going to apply the C1 clutch. And the, the C1 clutch, let me line our marks up here again. The C1 clutch is inside of this housing. It's the one that connects to that uh, hub that goes down to the rear sun gear of the Ravino gear set. So we're going to be we're going to be turning the rear sun gear for the first five gears out of the eight on this uh, Ravino gear set. And to make that happen, um, I need to connect this ring gear housing to that clutch hub housing inside of here and so uh, I've got a little uh, sheet metal screw and a hole I've drilled that I can use to connect those two together now I know you're not supposed to drill holes in automatic transmissions and the last time I did this on a demo I got all kinds of comments from viewers saying no you're not supposed to drill holes and that's no way to treat a transmission these are training transmissions they're never going to be put in a vehicle um, they'll be fine. This this works great without having any type of hydraulic clutch piston to apply a clutch that's not even in this housing. We're just going through the power flow here. So let me get that screw installed. Okay, so first gear, we've got a gear ratio of a little over four and a half turns to one. That's an impressive gear ratio. It's You'll really get some rapid acceleration out of that. And for first gear, we've got the C1 clutch applied that's down in here that connects this front ring gear with a gear reduction out of the front gear set of 1.863 to 1 and it connects it to the front I'm sorry the rear sun gear in the Ravino, Ravino uh, gear set and we have this uh, F1 uh, one-way sprag uh, or that's mechanically held also so I'm going to hold that holds the carrier so basically we're turning the rear sun gear holding the carrier of the Ravino gear set and we're turning the rear sun at a gear reduction of 1.83 to 1 off of the front gear set. So it's not the same as the first gear ratio obviously of the Ravino because its first gear ratio is two and a half to one roughly. This is four and a half to one. So we've got almost an additional two to one reduction out of here. So I should, I should be able to turn this input shaft four and a half turns to get one turn out of the output shaft. So here we go. One, two, three, four and a half turns of the input shaft to get one turn of the output shaft. So that's first gear. Uh, second gear, we keep the C1 clutch applied, and now we apply the B1 brake. Uh, the B1 brake 
is the brake clutch pack that goes around this housing that splines directly to the housing that goes to the front planetary gear set of the Ravenel gear set. So in other words, we're going to hold this housing from turning, which is the front sun gear. Uh, in this transmission, it's actually called the center sun gear because we, the front sun gear is the simple one. So we've got three, three sun gears the front sun gear, the center sun gear, and the rear sun gear. So we're going to hold this, we're going to hold the center sun gear and we're going to turn the rear sun gear. So we're holding the front, turning the rear. The gear ratio is 2.7 to 1. So here's our mark down here. So here's 1, 2, and about three quarters to give us 2.7 to 1 second gear ratio on this eight speed uh, transmission. Third gear, we keep the C1 clutch applied. We apply the C3 clutch. Well, the C3 clutch is the clutch that connects the ring gear of the front gear set to the center sun gear of our transmission here or of our planetary or Ravidno planetary gear set. So to do that I'm just going to take a, a paper towel and wad it up and shove it in here acting like it's the clutch plates connecting these splines to the internal splines of this housing. So I'll put that in there, right there. Third gear ratio is 1.8 turns of the input to one turn of the output. So let's line our marks up right here. And so we've got the C1 clutch turning the rear sun gear. We've got the C3 clutch turning through this housing the front sun gear. And that gives us, uh, in the Ravenel gear set, a one-to-one -one gear ratio, but it's being driven off of the front planetary gear set at a re gear reduction off of this ring gear and the planet carrier of 1.863 to 1. So even though this is in direct drive in the planetary gear set, it's still underdriven by the front gear set, and we get a 1.8 uh, to 1 uh, gear ratio. So... Here we go. Here's one turn and almost two. And we've got 1.8 turns to one of the, the transmission. Now, you'll notice there that we, we just locked these two together to give us a, a direct drive. Uh, now, for fourth gear, uh, remember, fourth gear on the Ravenel gear set was the overdrive of 0 0.685 to 1. Uh, we're, we're not ready for that yet. Uh, our fourth gear on this transmission is 1.464 to 1. So third gear was 1.8 to 1. Fourth gear is 1.4 to 1. So the way we get that in fourth gear is to keep the C1 clutch applied, turning the rear sun gear, and then also apply the C4 clutch. Well, the C4 clutch is this clutch right here that connects to the planet, the top of the planet carrier. So I had to get inventive <laughs> to make this uh, work in the demonstration here. So here I go putting some more screws in. And then a paper clip. <laughs> Just for demonstration purposes, I know this isn't how it's really done in the transmission. It's done with a clutch pack. But the point is, it, it's going to connect the C4 clutch inner splines to this hub, which drives the front sun gear, to its uh, outer splines. And this fourth gear is unique. And this is one of the things 
that this eight speed design does that's differently than most transmissions that you'll ever see. Uh, most transmissions with planetary gear sets, we hold one thing from turning, we turn something that's connected to the engine, and then the third piece of the three piece planetary gear set uh, drives eventually the, the tires and makes the vehicle move. Well, notice here in fourth gear, it's not direct drive. We've got a 1.4 to 1 gear ratio. Uh, we are not going to hold anything from turning. So instead of holding something from turning, we are going to take the C1 clutch that's driven by the ring gear of the planet carrier, which is driven at a reduced speed from the input shaft of 1.83 uh, to 1. Think of that as being the one that would normally be held. But we're not going to hold it solid. Think of it as we're allowing it to slip. Uh, but we're only allowing it to slip at a reduction of 1.863 to 1 versus the input shaft. So as I turn the input shaft here, um, let me get the... Uh, Let me get the marks lined up right here. Oh, I forgot to take the <laughs> forgot to take my paper towel out for the for the C3 clutch. Okay, so I'll put my paper clip back in, put it up around the, the sheet metal screw I'm not supposed to have in there, or the cabinet screw. And now we'll line our marks up again right here, get the tension on the just a second, I have to get everything lined up just right to start. Okay, so here's the unique thing that we never did on the six speed. And that is to not hold anything solid. We're going to allow it to turn at we're going to allow it to turn. So this gear ratio for fourth gear is 1.4 to 1. So here's our marks of the output shaft. Here's our input shaft. So now if I turn this, there's 1.4, roughly one and a half turns of the input shaft to one turn of the output shaft. Now you heard my paper clip rattling on the, the uh, clutch uh, housings here. Just ignore that, but I couldn't figure out another way to connect these two uh, pieces together. And it's such an unusual design that I wanted you to see that if you'll notice as I turn it, the, the ring gear is turning instead of being held solid. The planet carrier is turning at a one to one gear ratio. And that gives us a different gear ratio than we could have ever had on that six speed. So there's that is our fourth gear. All right, fifth gear. Fifth gear is another one where we don't hold anything solid from turning with the planetary gears. Uh, so fifth gear, fifth gear, we have both the C1 clutch and the C2 clutch on at the same time. So the, the C1 clutch is in here. The C2 clutch is the clutch clear down to the bottom. So the intermediate, we've got the input shaft that went in connected to the intermediate shaft, and then it went to that clutch drum in the bottom down here. That clutch drum, when we apply that clutch, will connect it to the planet carrier. So I have another sheet metal screw that I'm going to install and connect the inner and outer uh, lines. Let's see if that that does it. I think so. Okay, so let's line up our our marks again down here. Here we go. So fifth gear, we've got a gear ratio of 1.2 to 1. So we've got some tiny little gear steps here. Remember fourth gear was or first gear is this gigantic four and a half to one. And second gear is roughly half of that 2.7 to one. 
but then third gear 1.8 fourth gear 1.4 fifth gear 1.2 so I should turn this input shaft 1.2 turns so here's one and 0.2 let me do that again so I'm clear back here so here's one and two tenths more less than a quarter turn to give us one turn of the output shaft so that's fifth gear now sixth gear on this eight speed automatic transmission is direct drive straight through direct drive of um, all the components and we do that by uh, applying the C2 clutch which is already applied with my little screw down in the bottom here and the C4 clutch well the C2 drives the the Raveno carrier the C4 clutch is the um, clutch that turns the Raveno front sun gear so all I have to do oh and I have to release the um, C1 clutch so let me take the screw out of the C1 that was holding it applied so what we're going to do is turn the planet carrier of the Raveno gear set and the front sun gear of the planet or the Raveno gear set uh, the same speed and so that is done through the C4 clutch that turns the ring gear let's see no the C2 clutch down at the bottom here turns the planet carrier and the C4 clutch which is our direct input that turns the front sun gear so we're going to turn these two pieces the same speed so let me line our marks up uh, we're going to just simply turn these two pieces uh, the rear piece is turned by our input shaft the front piece is turned by well my paper clip uh, contraption here so let me hook that back up okay so let's get our lot marks lined up here we go just simply a one turn in equals one turn out um, gear ratio so let me line those up again so I'm right over here where I start one turn in equals one turn out all right now uh, that sixth gear is our direct drive well, that means seventh gear and eighth gears are overdrive and double overdrive so uh, seventh gear we keep the c2 clutch applied in the bottom and now we apply the c3 clutch well the c3 clutch is this clutch housing right here so let me take out the my paper clip demonstration tool here we will put our wadded up paper towel back in to give us an engagement of the front planet ring gear to the center sun gear and the C2 clutch drives the Raveno, Raveno uh, carrier so let's line our marks up here Okay, we'll line the marks up right there. Now this is overdrive, and our overdrive gear ratio is 0 0.824. So eight tenths of a turn, a little more than three quarters of a turn up here, should give us one turn down here. So I'm starting right over here. There's half, three quarters, eight tenths of a turn of the input gives us one full turn of the output. That's our first overdrive in this eight speed ice and automatic. Our second overdrive, we keep the C2 clutch applied, and now we apply the B1 brake. Well, the B1 brake, all it does is stop this front sun gear through this housing from turning. So let me pull out my uh, paper towel that we use to apply the C3 clutch with. And now our gear ratio is 
for our final overdrive 0 0.685 which is exactly the same gear ratio as um, the Raveno gear set overdrive gear ratio it's a pretty low or pretty tall overdrive 0 0.685 so I'm going to hold the front sun gear from turning we're going to turn the rear planet carrier and I should be able to turn the, f the input shaft a little more than half a turn so right over here would be half a turn somewhere around here would be 0.685 so here we go output shaft spinning really fast marks are lined up and 0.685 almost 0.7 turns of the input shaft versus the the output shaft so that gives us eight forward gears and reverse and once again the the thing that's unique about this transmission is the three gears that we don't hold and turn pieces of the planetary gear set we allow those pieces to not slip but to turn at a, a slower speed and those gears are fourth fifth and seventh and because of this design uh, this guy at Ison that got the first patent on this eight-speed design um, they were able to go to market and Lexus has had an eight-speed automatic transmission since 2008 uh, the GM one just came out this year in the Corvette and in some of their uh, trucks and SUVs the uh, ZF the ZF German one came out in 2013 in some Chrysler products and and other uh, vehicle manufacturer products uh, around the world uh, I understand uh, Honda or Acura has an eight-speed automatic and some Acuras but it's not a planetary gear set design I, I believe it's the automated uh, manual transmission which I, I will do a separate video on Honda uh, automatic transmissions so this has been a demonstration of the very cool uh, Ison eight-speed automatic transmission once again we we owe uh, credit for this transmission to two Frenchmen from a very long time ago um, Mr. Ravigno, Ravigno from 1949 in his patent. Mr. Le Peltier that put the simple planetary gear set with the Ravigno gear set to give us six speeds in 1989. And then the guy from uh, Japan uh, in 1999 that patented this eight speed uh, design. Uh, amazing stuff. And we're, we're going to see 9-speed and 10-speed uh, transmissions here not too long in the future. Uh, Chrysler already is using a 9-speed. And there's a joint venture between GM and Ford to make a 10-speed uh, for their trucks. And so we'll see what other designs are used and how they get uh, 9 and 10 speeds out of some of those future ones. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.